Hi everyone, uh, in this game I'm going to cover my most painful defeat probably ever since my third game, uh, the third game I ever played, which I played in the Croatian Cup Finals 2016 where I was up a night and lost and then cried after the game. Uh, this was, I think this was worse uh, and I don't remember ever being this devastated after a game or after anything basically that happened the last few years, uh, regardless of chess. So anyway, uh, after five rounds, uh, I had three out of five, which was a good score. So with a win here, I would have had four out of six. Uh, plus FIDE score, uh, I would be up in ELO uh, rating. And, and basically a good score at the tournament. I could afford a tough round in round seven and it would have been a good, good tournament. So I was playing uh, Maroslava Tsivana, who is 1,700... Uh, ELO rated, but more than 1900 national, a good player with a lot of experience, so by no means an easy match. And her coach is a very strong player, so I know that she is going to be prepared. I knew that she was going to be prepared for the game and I knew that she knows what I play. So I had the white pieces, she plays bishop c5 against the Italian, so I prepared the line which I've never played. Uh, and yeah, I, I had enough time to prepare for the game, prepared for about five hours, I was ready for anything and uh, managed to get my prep in, managed to get a good game and as you will see, a good position. So after e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bc4, bc5, c3, uh, I went for the classical Italian, the Gioco Piano, knight f6. D3, these are all the main moves of the Gioco Pianissimo now, D6, and here I usually uh, will castle uh, or play bishop B3, but castle as the, as the main move, but for this game I prepared B4, uh, and bishop B6 castles castles, I could have played the immediate A4, but I prepared the line with castles, uh, rook E1, knight G4 doesn't work, just rook E2, uh, A6, uh, which is sort of imprecise, white is supposed to be slightly better here already. And now I went for the main plan in the Italian of transferring my knight to d2 and then to f1. But I, for this game I've prepared the line in which I play bishop e3 after knight f1 and a line with knight e3. So knight bd2, queen e7, uh, which is a good move. Uh, might seem like a slight waste of time, but it develops the queen and prepares bishop e6. Knight f1, bishop e6, I can take, but I don't really want to take, I want to keep the pieces on the board. Uh, if I take, she's going to recapture with the f-pawn, uh, and that way I'm not going to have the f5 square for my knights, so I want to keep f5 free, free for my pieces. Obviously her doubled pawns, if I take, f takes e6, would be very useful for her d5 break and for controlling f5. So I played bishop b3. If she takes, I'm going to recapture with the queen. Obviously, wouldn't mind improving the positioning of my queen with tempo. Here she played h6, stopping bishop g5 and knight g5. Uh, that's a good move. And now bishop e3, which was my plan. And this was still sort of my prep, uh, not in conjunction with queen e7, bishop e6, but basically this position where her bishop is on b6, pawn on a6, and I play bishop e3. Now there's no way for her to, to decline the trade. If she moves the bishop back, I'm going to take knight takes, and then knight e3, uh, with uh, the similar uh, result, but uh, her knight is going to be misplaced. On a7, she's going to have to waste another move for either knight b, b5 or knight c6. So she takes, knight takes, and now she took the b bishop as well. Queen takes b3, and now she played queen d7. Probably in anticipation of knight f5, and also preparing the d5 break. So now uh, I went for my plan. I want to keep uh, a clear bind on the f5 square. Uh, if she plays g6, she's, uh, she has a very loose position. And she basically cannot play g6, so I play knight h4. If g6 now, then obviously knight takes g6 would be a losing position for black because the f-pawn is pinned to the queen. So now I have two knights coming into f5, already a better position. The engine is going to say that it's equal, but it's uh, on a human level much easier to play for white. Rook a to d8, a sensible move fighting for d5, the only counterplay she might have. Rook a to d1. And now king h7, uh, preparing to meet knight f5 with g6, still a loosening move, but at least 
not allowing any knight g6 tricks. Because if she doesn't play that, uh, let's say she plays the move queen e7, then knight g6 win the exchange, and she always have to be has to be on, on the lookout for the move. So king g7 is a good prophylactic move, just getting rid of uh, my threats. And now I play the maneuver which I also had on my board in my preparation, not for this game, but for the tournament. And I saw an interesting line in which I can double up her f-pawns and then have pressure along the a-file. Uh, this move I prepared in conjunction with b4 because it's then easy to pry open uh, the queen side with, uh, with a4. And then basically if she does nothing I'm going to play a5 and then... Uh, and then b5 uh, in a way that she she doesn't have an option to block the the queen side up so obviously if I pawn, if my pawn is on a5 she doesn't have the option of playing a5 after b5 so that's what i went for i went for knight d5 uh, declining this trade is not a good idea firstly because my knight is very good secondly because her knight would have to be misplaced and then the queen would have to recapture misplacing the queen as well so she has to take queen takes d5 and now uh, the move I have had on my board queen e6 uh, which seems to be the best idea now queen takes e6 f takes e6 and knight f3 and similar positions I was analyzing uh, for the tournament and now in my opinion white is strategically much better uh, I obviously have the queen side play uh, here I have uh, a better pawn structure it's not easy for her to play d5 which is the main thing I have to stop Obviously, if she if she takes on d5, then I would capture with the e pawn. If he takes if she takes with the rook, then she still has doubled e pawns, which are going to be easy targets. And if she takes with the e pawn, then I'm of course going to capture the e5 pawn and be a pawn up. So d5 is not an option. Uh, I rerouted my knight to f3 specifically because of that. If I don't play knight f3, then d5 is a good move and equalizes for black. Rook f7, rook e2. Uh, I want to uh, defend my f2 square to make sure I can move the knight. I also want to double up my rooks on the a file afterwards, so this is a double purposed move. Rook d to f8, which I didn't like. Obviously, there's no pressure here. Uh, and now a4. Uh, she went for the... I, I, I think she could have played a better move here. Uh, perhaps just waiting. Perhaps playing uh, the move b6 would work. In which case, if I ever play a5, then she can continue with b4, b5, and it's going to be harder to me to for me to open up the position because my b4 pawn is now hanging. I'm going to probably have to play the move d4, open up the position this way, and then continue looking for chances along the c file when the c file opens up, which isn't a bad idea, and this I've looked at, but I think this would have been the most resistant attempt. After a4, however, she continued with b5, which just has to be winning for white uh it's not easy to win but i knew what my plan was and i knew that in about 30 moves i was going to win uh, the engines now finally think that that white is better this is now more than plus one and now a b5 a b5 rook a1 and obviously black has no play white has everything in the position rook b8 uh, she has to try defending uh, and now rook a6 chasing the knight away Knight e7 is possible, she went for knight d8, and now rook e to a2. And now my pressure is overwhelming, um, my position is just way more active. If you compare the rooks, if you compare the knights, uh, if you compare the pawn structure, white is superior in every aspect of the game. She went for g5, and now I went for a strategic exchange which uh, favors me definitely. Uh, trading off a pair of rooks here can only favor white because then uh, we are stuck with uh, two pieces on the board and both of my pieces are much better than her pieces. So I went for rook a8. She has to trade. Uh, the only other option is knight c6, but then after rook takes rook, knight takes rook, rook a8, rooks, uh, rook f8, her rook is tied down and I have a free hand on the queen side. So she took rook takes, knight c6 and now rook a6, chasing the knight away once more to d8 h3 one prophylactic move stopping g4 and now i just need to improve my pieces until i can win some material this is uh, strategically and according to the agents winning for white king g7 knight d2 improving my knight king f8 knight f1 i want to get my knight to uh, to e3 stopping any counterplay stopping any uh, ideas of d5 rook d7 trying to play d5 but now now knight e3 King e7, king f1, 
c6 was tried and king e2 and now all of my pieces are optimal uh, there's basically nothing she can do but wait to to lose and it's not easy to break through but i had an idea of how i was going to do it here she played rook b7 probably trying to either play c5 or d5 and i continued with rook a8 uh, rook a8 is a move which restricts her pieces obviously the knight cannot move because my rook is going to win the h6 pawn and it doesn't leave her time for any uh, serious counterplay she went for h5 here which i expected trying to trade off queenside pawns trying to release the pressure uh, uh, of the king side i'm sorry but after the move g4 uh, this is now basically game over uh, believe it or not, uh, because of one simple maneuver, knight c2, knight e1, knight f3, putting pressure on g5, and she's going to have to tie her rook down along the g-file and defend, and in the meantime I'm going to be playing my pawn breaks and win. So she went for h4, I went for my maneuver, knight c2, knight e7, knight e1, king e8, knight f3, she has to defend, rook g7, and this is busted, if I turn on the engine, <coughs> I'm sorry, this is more than plus three. There's basically no moves for, for, for black. She cannot move her king easily because then rook takes rook. And after rook takes rook, king takes rook, knight g5 is winning. Uh, she cannot move the knight because it's pinned. She can only move the rook from g6 to g7 to g8. So I played king e3, improving my position even more. My king is better on e3. I have time. Rook g8, she has no moves, has to repeat. And now finally I, I go for the win. c4 going to create a passed pawn bc4 dc4 she played king e7 and pinning her knight now i had a sweet choice between b5 uh, and c5 had i played b5 she obviously has to take because her rook is hanging so takes takes uh, the best move probably would be king d7 and now rook a7 check forcing the king back king c8 knight d2 rook g6 doing nothing knight c4 and now after knight b7 uh, rook a6 putting pressure on uh, on the d6 pawn and on the e5 pawn if the d6 pawn moves after king d7 i have a tactical blow here uh, rook takes d6 and obviously if she takes with the knight i'm going to play knight takes e5 with a completely winning position so b5 was a very strong move in my head c5 was stronger and they're basically the same uh, both winning after c5 uh, she has to take if she doesn't take then it's going to be game over i'm just going to take king takes uh, knight takes g5 rook takes g5 rook takes d8 check and that's basically it so she has to take uh, i don't want to recapture immediately i think this would have been a weaker move instead i went for knight takes e5 and now she played king uh to to d6 and here uh here it happened the first mistake happened uh, without thinking for thinking uh, after thinking for about i would say 20 seconds i go for a line which is a complete draw from plus five uh, i enter a completely drawn position and yeah the worst thing is that i didn't think obviously i saw the move knight c5 check knight c4 check after she moves the king i mean i just take here put my knight on d6 she still cannot move her knight i'm a pawn up i'm going to win every single pawn on the board and be just winning there are other options as well uh but i went for a ridiculous move rook takes d8 uh, and after rook takes d8 knight f7 check king d7 knight takes d8 king takes d8 bc5 uh she obviously has to play one move if you want to pause the video and uh, find the drawing move the move is e5 after e5 there's no way for me to break through and after the game uh well you still have to see what happened uh okay let, let me just show you the rest of the game so i thought in my head in my 20 seconds think that my f3 tempo uh i have an extra move to force a king away is going to be enough to gain the opposition here what my mind didn't see is that she doesn't need opposition she can just go a7 b7 and completely draw so that's exactly what happened at this point here she offered me a draw and i was sweating it was 35 degrees in the hall i was frustrated i wanted to throw up uh declined the draw wanted to try something uh 
and the the thing I wanted to try is insanely stupid, remarkably stupid, unbelievably stupid, and uh, just doesn't work. So I was looking at was the move f4, and f4 obviously doesn't work. Um, if I play f4, she's going to have a protected passed pawn, and now it remains to be seen how many squares do I need to uh, play to promote, and how many she has. So obviously, if let's say I played here, takes, takes, it's an equal number of squares. So that's what was in my uh, empty, frustrated mind. So we get to this position where she puts her king on the back rank and they start being happy. Start calculating f4, e takes f4, e5, and then f3, and then e6, f2, e7, f1, queen, but I queen with check on e8. And I thought, hmm, even if I don't win, it's going to be a more complicated draw. I play f4. As soon as I play f4, uh, I wanted to throw up. I cannot explain the feeling. Uh, I cannot explain the feeling which I felt after I played f4. And about half a second after I played it, I got a sick feeling in my stomach. Wanted to throw up and wanted to basically run away and shout in some forest. Uh, because after e takes f4, I played the movie 5. Pause the video if you want. She doesn't have to play f3, she just catches my pawn, and I can resign. e6, king c7, game over. And that is how I lost a one game. Uh, after not thinking at all, I took the rook uh, and... I took the knight, I'm sorry, went for a draw landing, and then frustrated, I, I lost... I defeated myself and congratulations to her for staying calm in all of that and defeating me. Uh, that's actually what happened to me in one game on the Croatian Cup. It was a draw of the guy forced to win because he was higher rated and then he lost. So I can understand the feeling completely and now this happened to me. That is something I definitely have to work on. Firstly, if you have a winning position, so here, uh, after King D6, if you see a good move, look for a better one. Obviously, rook takes seems like a nice move, but look for a better one. Uh, it would have taken me probably 30 seconds to spot the move e5 and see that the game is a draw. But I just didn't even try to consider that option. So when you see a good move, look for a better one. And the next thing is, when you blunder, accept that you blundered and don't make the situation worse. This is obviously a draw. I knew it was a draw. And... Uh, yeah, I, I cannot explain the feeling I felt after the game. I actually posted, uh, took this score sheet uh, of the game, took a picture of it and posted it on Patreon for for the guys to see immediately because I needed some psychological support. I really didn't know what to do. Called Lucia, my girlfriend, ca called one of my best friends, my best friend who supports me in chess. Called my mother, called my father, uh, tried to talk to them and try to, I mean, just consolidate my thoughts because the worst thing was I had a game in the afternoon, which I, not that I didn't want to play, I wanted to go back home, which for the last year never happened to me. I, I managed to get much stronger in defeat and wasn't really that struck when, when losing a game and this was unbelievably hard to bear for me and luckily uh, I... I I went and had some lunch, went back to my room and read some Seneca and some Epictet, Epictetus, and uh, read some of the books which I which I like, and then regained my strength. One in the uh, drew in the afternoon. Yeah. Uh, one in the afternoon. I'm sorry, I played an unrated player. So a tough game. Uh, still. I, I outplayed her completely, played a great game uh, up until uh, the move rook takes the d8 and I think that I didn't make a single mistake, which is good, but I need to keep calm when I'm winning, I need to look for better moves when I think I, I see winning moves, that's the greatest lesson I, I could take from this game. And I don't think I will ever allow myself to lose a drawn game so obviously drawn in which i'm the only one who can make a move that loses for me i had enough time on the clock it's not that i didn't have time i was just so frustrated and irritated that i blundered 
Okay, let me know what you think about this game. Let me know if something like this ever happened to you. Uh, if you want extra content, if you want, uh, if you want to look at my detailed analysis of the game, join me on Patreon. I would really appreciate the support. And stay tuned for more chess. Thank you very much. Bye bye.